Dream is cleared for takeoff. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the sixth official Microsoft Flight Simulator developer Q&A. My name is Jane. I'm one of the community managers here. Thank you for joining us. Hey, chat. Hope all is well. Let me know if the audio levels are good. Um, I'll go ahead and introduce uh, the three people below. You have Yorg. Hey, Yorg. Hi. Excited to be here. Thank you. Uh, in the middle, we have Seb. Hello. And last but not least, we have Marcial. Hi, everyone. Awesome. Thank you guys for joining me. <laughs> I do hear a little bit of echo. I think it's coming from someone's uh, someone's video. So if you could just mute yourself while you're not I talking. think it was me. Oh, was it you? Uh, I'm, okay. I'm muted. I'm very sorry. No worries. What a bad beginning. I'm sorry. No worries. Sounds good. Sounds good now, I think. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have a pretty huge agenda today. Um, as you can see, we're trying out a, a new agenda format. If you type in exclamation point agenda, it'll bring you to the forums where it kind of lays out what we're going to be doing today. Um, that way you know when we're doing live questions, when we're talking about Sim Update 3, etc. cetera. So uh, feel free to look at that. We got the other community manager Alex, he'll be in there kind of checking things off along the way as we go. So if someone joins late, they'll see what we've already covered and hopefully we can avoid some duplicate questions. Um, thanks for that, Royal. But I think we should go ahead and get started because we have a lot to cover. We'll, this is about a 90 minute show. Um, so we'll go ahead and delve into Sim Update 3 because as you know, that came out yesterday. And we appreciate all the feedback we've we've already gotten in the past 24 hours or so. Um, there's a lot to delve into here. We asked you guys in the forums to ask us some questions regarding four very specific topics. Um, so we're going to go ahead and delve into that. And we're going to start with some of the easier questions because there's a few questions that, that were uh, very relevant and already fixed in this update. So the first one was regarding uh, implementing OBS in garments, which I did notice yesterday it was implemented. I didn't see it in the patch notes, but it looks like that was already done and finalized. Martial, is that all good? Yeah, yeah. the OBS mode is done and, and fixed for the Garmin mm -hmm. G1000. Okay, yeah, so I think a lot of people were happy to see that. Um, but obviously, I saw in the forums, Garmin is a huge topic that we definitely want to cover. So we're going to save that for a special segment uh, at the end of this, af after we talk about all the topics here. So we're uh, we're gonna save that. So just hold on a little bit, and we'll get to that soon. So let's delve into some questions. I'm gonna start with the altimeter temperature errors. Um, it's somewhat avionics related. So this is from NijNT, I'm trying to say these names right, I'm gonna butcher them, so I apologize. <laughs> NijNTJE91. So, they say the indicated altitude does not seem to be influenced by temperature at all. In real life, barometric altitudes need to be corrected for cold temperature to get the correct true altitude. And there's a saying that they included, from high to low, watch out below. Can we expect any advancements in this area? Uh, so yes, because we, we, we've, we've read the comments, so we spent some time on that. So it's not going to be, uh, it's not published yet, so it's not going to be available on Simulated 4, on Simulated 3, I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, we work on that, it's already fixed, and it will be available in Simulated 4. Sim update Same. 4. Maybe you want to talk about that a bit? Oh, know. yes. yes. Um, so um, it's a rewrite which, which fixes um, two issues. Uh, it's a rewrite of the yeah, altimeter instrument in the in the airplane. Um, it fixes one issue that was um, it was that the pressure altitude when whenever you fly high enough, you know you switch to um, you don't fly by you, you don't have the real uh, pressure anymore. You you fly at uh, 10, uh, 1013 uh, millibar or something, uh, and you're flying at that level. And basically, what was happening is, is that the the you were setting you, what you were asking is not what you were getting. Uh, so the the issue here was that there's a um, there's basically a, a pressure formula which has been reworked uh, in the weather engine, um, and it's much much more accurate. But the instrument wasn't actually accounting for that. It was still old uh, old uh, the old precision basically. So we have reworked that, and while we did that, we also integrated the whole temperature instrument error. And so, um, yeah, in the future update, similar bit four, you should get a correct pressure altitude 
correct uh, temperature deviation and uh, and also basically the altimeter is is more accurate even when you're in in not in pressure altitude when you're just normally um, uh, flying normally. Okay, thank you for that. And just a reminder, we do have a live question section at the end. Um, the next question I have from Serva ASD is: Are you aware that ITT is behaving incorrectly on the TBM 930? It should rise when ascending and even be a limiting factor when reaching peak height where throttle power would be maxed out? So the answer is yes, we are aware. And um, this should be fixed in SIM update 4 because we intend to uh, to spend um, a bit uh, amount of time, a bit amount of time, some time at least, on the on the turbine themselves. So this ITT issue should be fixed with this uh, uh, pass we're going to do on, on turbines. OK. Gotcha, gotcha. Thank you. And now I'm, I'm going to switch views here to our big screen because we have a video to accompany this. So someone mentioned that the terrain mountains are very rounded and they don't feel it's detailed enough. So Seb, could you talk about this a little? I'll have the video here now. Yeah, uh, so um, I just, uh, I, I made a quick video just to show um, the terrain detail. Basically this shows on the left side, you see um, zooming into Kosovel and the left side, you see what you see in the sim and the right side, I switched to wireframe. Uh, just so that you see the amount of detail that the engine is simulating. Um, basically, it's it's so much that at the distance you you pretty much don't don't see the wireframe at all. It seems like it's it's completely filled up. And uh, basically, this is um, it's more a question about uh, the data that we feed into the into the the rendering. So basically, every time um, so Jörg is going to talk about this when he talks about world updates. Sometimes there is updated dem data. It happened already for the USA. Um, when the dem data gets better. We get more precision into the into the the dem, um, and it has to happen at all the LODs. Um, so this is something we're continuously improving. It's not really a problem with the, um, the amount of detail or graphics power or rendering or anything. It's just the the pipeline of data that is coming from uh, from the storage on on the cloud, how accurate that is, and uh, and if we get better data and uh, and downloading this into the computer. But yeah, I just wanted to share this side by side that, so that you can see it's. The detail is there. It's just um, in terms of in terms of three D. Um, it's not just always there in terms of depending where you fly. Uh, sometimes it's super crisp, but sometimes it's it's not as as accurate. Gotcha. Cool. Thanks for making that video. All right, back to our interview screen here. Um, I think it's important to talk about next the icing effect. Uh, the last Q and A we didn't quite get a satisfying answer to the problems. Currently, the icing effect. Uh, is not only affecting performance, but also the visual representation is wrong. The icing looks like the aircraft has been parked overnight in freezing fog and is covered with frost. Are you aware of this? Are there any updates planned across uh, to address the severity and visual appearance? Um, they also asked, could we get an option to completely disable the icing effect? So yes, we are aware. And um, icing is a very complex thing. There's so much difference of icing and and, and for now, we just have one layer and one, one shader. So we just one, got one tip of uh, icing and it's a bit exaggerated. So we intend to fix that. And, and also, uh, we know that some people like, uh, like in VR, uh, when you've got icing, it's very, very difficult to, uh, to read. And, and sometimes you want to, uh, to unplug this effect. So on, on Sim Update 4, you will also be able to have a this option on which you can get rid of everything. So it would be no mm -hmm. icing at all, only visual, and also um, uh, icing on the dynamic and also on, on the um, on the engine side, like for uh, for piston engines, for instance. It's another kind of icing, but it's, it's icing also. OK, fantastic. And can you share, Marcel, any details regarding the new effects system? We obviously saw yesterday the contrails added. Um, can you go so, into detail yeah. about that? Yes, we can. Um, so you saw the very first version of the contrails. And, and for now, um, uh, the contrails are, are, are not taking into account the wind. So it's something uh, we will bring soon, hopefully for Sim Update 4. And, um, and on top of that, we would like to, uh, to improve the FX system so we can put effects on, on some other situations, like on landing. And landing will, will then take into account the, uh, the kind of ground you're landing on. Um, so it's still work in progress. Uh, we would like to collect your feedback. But it's, well, it was nice to have some controls, but it's, it's, it's like, like we say for the other parts, it's only the, 
the beginning of the of our trip there. Mm. Yeah, a lot of a lot of these implementations more of a range. So this is the start of contrails. It sounds like you're mm -hmm. doing a lot of work for the future of this year to to improve on that. All right, we're switching back to some videos. Seb, um, question here: Can we investigate the glide slope? The glide slope. Uh, this would be the minimum drag speed for uh, the current version. In their experience, they they feel like they have to double the sobel values to get a realistic LD max. Um, do, do you do you think this is a bug, or can you go over lift and drag a little so, bit? Um, so, so th there was this bug in between World Update UK mm -hmm. and when it got hotfixed, so I think for 10 days or something, where flap lift was doubled because of basically a, a, a mix in the in the integration of the of the files and uh, it was badly interpreting uh, the, the file basically of the of the flaps uh, in the in the flight model file. Um, but um, otherwise, before that, before World Update uh, UK and after the hotfix and now, um, so I've done an in investigation. I don't see the video yet. But basically, I've displayed the, the lift versus drag polar mm -hmm. uh, for the TBM first, and uh, and then for the 747. That's the two planes that were mentioned. Mentioned. Okay. So in okay. in clean, um, and so you need to um, you need to see that this is without engine drag or anything. It's just the the pure aerodynamics. You can see the red line or the numbers, and it's super visible. But the 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 minimum, the red line shows really the minimum, the, the best L over D um, effect. Um, and it is at um, L over D ratio, so this lift over drag ratio of about 17. Um, that's the data we have for the, the TVM. It's about, so between 16 and 17. Uh, uh, in clean without engine drag is the glide ratio when you're, when you're on the TVM. And, and I would say at, at, at the glide speed, right? Because the elevator has some influence on that. So we check that uh, with that tool, uh, displaying the drag, you can see um, when the input surfaces um, change, um, you can see the, the the drag polar and the lift and drag polar basically changing because, so this tool here is a wind tunnel. We run the plane in a wind tunnel, we measure all different um, angles and everything, and we build that polar. So when, and it's a real time wind tunnel applied to the real plane. So if you turn out, so for example, here I'm putting out the, the flaps. When you put out the flaps, the, the polar completely changes and you can see the, the lift over drag ratio is more around six or seven, but clean, yeah, it's uh, it's 16 to 17. That's the data we've been building on um, without any engine drag. So if if someone has more information and thinks this should be different, um, we are happy to have feedback, but what we've measured after this investigation is not something like double or half or something. It's very close to the data that we have. Same for the, so I, I did the same investigation on the 747. I'm finding, uh, up, I mean, the best um, lift over drag ratio of about 20-ish something. Um, from the data we have, same thing for the 7, 747 is supposed to be a very good glider when, he, when it's clean. Um, so uh, no, no real engine drag here. So uh, same thing when you put out the flaps, obviously it gets really low, uh, uh, below 10 uh, lift uh, over drag ratio. But so we've done this investigation on both plane. <clears throat> we didn't find any doubling or halving except this uh, update bug, which was really only on flaps um, for a short time. Um, so um, yeah, I think 747, 20 uh, lift over drag is about correct. So if someone has more feedback, we are happy to look at it, but we didn't find anything wrong uh, uh, after our investigation. Okay, and related to that, um, another question was, we have that the SIM has no propeller drag parameter. Do we plan to give the flight model such a parameter? So um, propeller drag, um, the, the, it's, the propeller drag is, is simulated, it's fully simulated. There is no such thing where you say, oh, I want more propeller drag, because it's a full simulation of the full engine, and propeller drag is generated basically when uh, the, the propeller is uh, windmilling, I mean, and basically when, when you're idle <clears throat> and the propeller is, uh, is, the RPM is going up because you're going fast. So this you will see, right, if you take the Cessna 172, uh, you go idle and you dive, the, the RPM is going to go up. Um, but um, the amount of drag which is generated really depends on the internal engine friction and the whole the whole mechanics, basically, um, between the propeller and the pistons and all that. And this is all simulated, um, but it needs tweaking. So some planes, for example, um, um, the Robin DR400, it's about the right drag. 
Um, and uh, on the Cessna 172, it was a bit weak. I, I just checked this yesterday. So we're iterating and we will update that. And you obtain this by, by tweaking basically the internal friction of the, of the engine. Um, and so there is no direct parameter. We could, so if this something is needed by the um, um, people who author planes, we can maybe add a scalar. So the sim has a lot of different scalars, which are really there to do some, some sort of final tweaking. Um, and there are, yeah, there is no propeller drag scaler. It's easy to add something like this, which just <clears throat> sort of fake boosts the propeller drag if you just want more without redoing a full engine. Um, currently, we have to redo really, I mean, once you change the internal friction, it's sort of, you have to retweak the whole engine. Um, and so um, this is what we've started to do uh, mm -hmm. on, on three planes so far. Um, and we have tested a few more, which were already correct. So it's, it's really very variable. And yes, we could, if needed, um, just let us know add a scalar like that, which makes it easier then. OK. Thanks so much, Seb. I'll kick it back to Martial for a couple questions about input and controls. So will okay. it be possible to have our saved flight control profile settings linked in the different aircraft we have set the controls up for when we load up the aircraft we choose? And in addition, could we export our control, assi control assignments to a file so we can back them up? So the, these two features, it's something we'd like to bring. Uh, so we are working on the refactorization of the uh, input controls. So in order to be able to, to do what we said, saying uh, mm -hmm. uh, having different profiles and also being able to, uh, to export import the, this profile in, in the sim. So yes, we, it's, I, I can't commit on a date, but it's something we'd like to bring soon. So whenever it's available, right? Thanks. <laughs> Jorg, uh, Jorg will have Lots of things to say very soon. <laughs> like, <laughs> York's feeling left out. Don't worry. Don't worry. Um, and another in input question. Will the controls be further improved to be able to make the Thrustmaster TCA Quadrant fully compatible um, with current controls? So yeah, uh, we got some feedback, uh, and especially with, with this forum. So uh, Steve, our input specialist here, is already working on that. And just to let you know, uh, Trustmaster is one of our um, partner here, and 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 it deserves a full support. So it's a priority for us. Okay, very good. And hopping back to the screen here. So, Seb, are we going to implement flight model realism sliders to allow proper plane behavior for expected pilots while keeping it easy for casual players? Um. So yeah. So <clears throat> actually, this is already. In the sim, I, I made a quick video of what is the page. So it's it's not called realism. If you, it's in the assistance menu, yeah. piloting, you have to set this thing too hard. If you don't set it too hard, you get all sorts of assistances, um, which will turn off um, crosswind. It's going to turn off engine effects. It's going to turn off all the little things which make it harder, where you just, uh, I mean, if you turn it to easy or even medium, it's, it's very arcadish. If you go on hard, um, then you're going to get all these effects. So this is. For example, takeoff auto rudder. Um, it's actually also doing a little bit of uh, auto rudder in the initial climb. Uh, when you know when initial climb, when you're slow, um, the planes I fly, you still need to put a foot on the right side quite a, for quite a while. <clears throat> Once you're cruising, you don't need that anymore. Um, and uh, even if you are in a turn and your plane does um, require some foot also on the rudder, this is going to help. So um, make sure you're on hard. Or at least you turn takeoff rudder, at least a, a few of these off. You can maybe leave the, the checklists on, um, um, mm. but not the, yeah, not the, not the auto rudder. Um, this, is this is taking really some of the stuff out. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it, it, uh, it helps you. So it, it's basically when you have this on, on the runway, where there is crosswind, engine effects, whatever happens, the plane is going to go straight and take off. So um, if you turn that too hard, um, and so I've made a, we're going to talk about this later. I've made a few videos. It's very obvious that there's obviously that it requires inputs, and so yeah, obviously here if there's specific requests for more effects, if you, um, um, people want some uh, things that we can turn um, more or less. So for example, one of our ideas for one of the additions here is um, to give people a bit more control over turbulences, mm -hmm. um, how strong and realistic they are. Um, um, so this is one thing in the weather, right? You can you can tweak around with the turbulences in the weather, but maybe you don't want um, them to impact the plane as much um, in terms of whatever um, handling or something like this. So this is, there's there's more parameters we can add. Um, it, it, we can add here, um, and so but this is already in the same. It's in the assistance menu piloting. Okay, thank you. So write it down. So it does sound like these are uh, 
open to improvements and you're kind of looking at this already for uh, more parameters you can add. Okie dokie. All right. So uh, the biggest problem, uh, here's another question. The biggest problem for most people flying IFR in the sim right now um, are the localizers. So the question is, why are all localizers in Microsoft Flight Simulator aligned with the runway track? In other words, why are there no offset approaches? And when, when can we expect this to be implemented? Um, well, we already did uh, some improvement here, and it will be um, an ongoing effort. So I know that we all already have planned some, some improvement also for Sim Update 4. Uh, that said, it, as I said, it's, it's an ongoing situation here because we know that we've got some discrepancies uh, between the runway data and the ILS data. Mm -hmm. So this has to be worked uh, in order to reconcile those and it, it would get better then. So uh, we, we will always working on that and we intend to improve that with the next sim updates. Okay. Thank you. So question back to you, Seb, um, back to some flight model questions. At the initial phase of turn, the simulated aircraft has the unrealistic tendency to climb and only later to descend. Um, in a real small GA, it, it tends to turn to descent. So I have another video here I'll pop on for you. Oh, so, yeah, you I agree with the feedback. And when I try in a real plane, um, so the only thing that happens is that it, dis it doesn't descend right away, at least in the DFR that I fly. When I start my turn, it, it continues sort of level, and then all of a sudden it starts to descend. Uh, I sometimes have a tendency to pull the yoke too early and to go up. And so that's where the instructor says, no, no, you turn, and then you pull the yoke. You don't do the two at the same time. I tried this in the sim three or four times. I recorded one of them. I didn't get the plane to climb. I just I flew level. I, so it is not autopilot or anything. I just trimmed it to fly level, uh, really steady, um, stable. So except maybe a little bit of turbulence. And I, I took the yoke, so I have a, I have this one here, and I went just left, and I didn't see any climbing at all. It just started falling, and then when it went down, so I didn't see this. Um, if someone has more information, I can I can investigate. But I tried it three times. What could happen is maybe so on something like this, you can easily go up or down a little bit while you go left. Maybe that. Um, maybe something else. Maybe maybe there's a, a bug I just couldn't find. Um, but so far, I haven't been able to see it, and uh, and uh, yeah, I would need I would need more information because that's not um, a, a bug I've I witnessed at least not on the one seventy two or the the DF four hundred. Okay, thank you, Seb. And speaking of controls, is there a possibility of including a nose wheel tiller access to control it independent independently from the rudder access? Uh, yes, uh, it's already there. So. Uh... Um, if you want to change that, if you want to, to sign some some keys or inputs on the on the steering, uh, you should go into the uh, input management. There, there's a field to do some some research. So if you type steering, you then will get uh, uh, decreased steering and increased steering. And so you can you, you can ask, uh, assign keys or uh, axes or buttons there. Okay. Thank you, and back to you, Seb. So uh, let's talk a little bit about um, crosswind during takeoff and landing. So um, the skeezer said typically you need to apply some uh, aileron. Oh, I lost my question. Here it is. Typically you need to apply some aileron um, into the wind to use adverse yaw as a force counteracting the tendency and turning into the wind. And they said they weren't properly uh, able to do the one wing low crosswind approach method. And they have rudder pedals and a yoke, but they just found it very difficult in, in the sim to keep the plane steady in the side slip. Mm -hmm. um, so same thing, I, I did a, so I did a test. So I didn't use, um, so again, I, did, I used this thing, um, but um, I, I tested, so it, it was working correctly, right? So um, um, I, uh, so this is the takeoff. Um, but uh, uh, so whether it's takeoff or landing, so there's another video, maybe you can show the landing, but um, it's sort of the same thing. Um, if you don't do any rudder or aileron input, you, you will come in as a crab, right? Basically because the, the wind is coming from one side. You have to go into this menu, right? And, uh, and take the, 
assistances and turn into heart, turn piloting to heart. If you don't do that, then crosswind is very, very small and, and, uh, and even inexistent as soon as you close to the ground. But if you do that, um, so here it's on takeoff, same thing, right? If I don't put some rudder, the plane is just gonna go um, sideways. If I pull in, if I pull some rudder, then I get some uh, in, um, uh, induced roll. Uh, and I have to basically, I have to counter the, um, uh, with, the, with the ailerons to just fly straight. Otherwise, uh, the rudder is going to make me turn. Mm -hmm. um, the other th thing also, uh, when there is side wind, it also pushes a little bit the wing upwards. So you always need a little bit of um, aileron, otherwise you're gonna, it's going to turn you. Uh, but that's only really on the ground, right? Once you're in the air, well, you just follow the wind and the air mass, so it doesn't do anything here on the landing. So same thing, I want to come in straight. You can see I have to do some rudder, right? So I'm trying to find. So that's that's not so easy with a with a, a stick, basically, because you have to turn it this way. But I'm trying to find basically what is the right input for the rudder, and then I have to put some aileron, right? And you can see me. I'm sort of hanging low, uh, low left wing. Otherwise, I'm just not flying straight. Um, and you can actually come in like this, um, and uh, and uh, and so the only issue is like turbulence. Like the wind is not always the same speed. So even if you find your rudder position. Uh, well, it's gonna it's gonna keep changing, um, and so this is a little bit easier in a real airplane because you, well you feel everything, and uh, one, at some point your feet are just connected to the plane and you counter almost like sub subconsciously without thinking. We don't have any force feedback or g forces or, or anything like this um, in the simulator, so um, you you have to basically do this based on how you see the plane or the, or the camera rotating. But here I'm doing a full it's 20 knots crosswind. I'm landing and I'm I'm keeping the rudder you see until I touch the ground. Mm. And here you see the, the, the it sort of wants to go over and I have to keep pressing the rudder. Otherwise I would just turn and I have to keep my, my uh, arrow in a little bit on the side, just a tiny bit. And then I'm too slow and it doesn't do much anymore. Yeah. Um, you can see on the takeoff, it's the same. Uh, so on the takeoff video, there was basically, um, so the problem is there's also some engine effect, right? But, uh, and I'm, yeah, I'm showing, I'm showing the wind just at the beginning. Um, but you have to counter, um, so also, at, so the, the ground friction model isn't perfect yet, but um, when you're slow, the wheels are much more sticky because you are still heavy. And uh, so they're helping you. Um, so you need less, um, less uh, to counter a little bit less at low speed. And when you're fast, the wheels are not sticking anymore because you're, you're lighter, but then the rudder is more effective. And the, the crosswind also is less important because you're going maybe at 50 or 60 knots. And if there's 20 wind, crosswind, it's, it's less significant. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not, Super strong at the end or the beginning, it's sort of not stable, but it's 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 almost the same intensity because of the wheel humping you. We have to improve the wheel um, friction model a little bit because it's it's better than before. It has static friction. It doesn't account for everything perfectly in reality. The the, the rubber is also a little bit soft. It does a little bit more. Um, it's a little bit more tolerant and a bit more smudgy. Mm -hmm. um, but um, it, we're gonna improve on that. But still, I think you have all these effects. But just turn them on in the in the assistance. Um, anyway, if they're not. Okay. Thank you, Seb. All right. So there is an immersion breaking bug for IFR pilots, uh, which enables RMI and bearing pointers to give bearings towards localizer antennas. This is impossible in real life. Is this a deliberate design choice or just a bug? Um, no, it was a bug, and it's supposed to be fixed for Synodet 3. So please check that. And if you still encountering some issues, give us some feedback. But that should be fixed already. Once okay. Did three. Fantastic. So if it's not, um, if you're in the forums, please let us know, and we'll take yeah. a look at that. Well, I think that the, the question was was asked before the Synod D three, so it should be fixed. Yeah. Thanks. Um, and so in the simulated C one seventy two, some of the users are having trouble feeling the adverse yaw. Um, so if you could go into a little more detail about adverse yaw, that'd be awesome. Yeah, so um, this is something uh, we checked this week on the 172 precisely. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I measured the adverse yaw. Um, so this is basically flying, same thing, flying level, trimmed, everything, and just going left, right on the yoke and seeing how much slip you get. Uh, with a currently published plane, I was getting a little bit below one degree. Uh, it feels a bit low. Um, uh, you can, uh, you, you will see the ball basically going left and right. Mm -hmm. And same thing in the assistance menu, turn it too hard. Otherwise, there's going to be some auto rudder. It's going to help you and it's going to really dampen this out. Okay. But if you are correctly set, 
it but it was still a bit low okay, given our fe pilot feedback there should be more at ratio so we checked into the plane again um we checked the whole sim and the physics there was no issue with that but we found some issues on um, the exact measures of basically we have to enter the areas of the um, rudder and uh, an elevator and they were just a few square feet too big um uh, yeah I'm, I'm French, I'm measuring square meters. So when I see square feet, I'm sort of, don't really know if it's too big or too small. Yeah. Um, but we measured again on the plane and oh, it's, it was a little bit too big. We corrected that data and I was surprised at how much it actually impacted the plane. Um, it felt a lot, having like a lot more inertia because basically the stabilizers were stabilizing this. Mm. And, uh, and also, um, so the adverse your went up from like just below one degree, it went up to 1.2, 1.3 sometimes. I didn't get more. The ball significantly moves. Um, I don't know how high it can get, right? I've never tried to really exaggerate it in a real plane. So what we also did is we sent someone up um, in a real plane and he recorded with a GoPro and uh, recorded the inputs. For the moment, we did that to measure, um, not the adversio, but the other thing, the induced roll. So mm -hmm. he did full, uh, so, very courageous. He, get, he went like full, full in on rudder uh, within one second and we measured the roll speed. Wow. So this is something where we now have actual data and we're doing this more and more with real planes, collecting data. Um, and so it's important to have exact weight and temperature and know exactly the speed and everything. So when we have everything on video, we can do timed. It's super cool to go frame by frame. And so we are adjusting stuff like this. And so we intend to do this again on Adversio to get okay. it perfect. Um, but currently, we have already an improvement, which is going to come for Simulpit 4. It's going to be a, a little bit improved Cessna. So this is not like a revolutionary change. It's still the same performance and, and same plane, but the handling is a little bit, I would say, better. Okay. That sounds like a fun job. Be the person to fly the plane to give you some data. Very cool. Uh, we just have about four or so questions left before we get to our next section. So just uh, in this next up. session. Yes. Will Jörg have the uh, possibility to to talk a bit? You know, I think I think I'll let that happen. <laughs> okay, that would be fantastic. I'll pass it over to Jörg. Um, but a few more questions here. Let's talk about uh, weather radar. So the weather oh, radar yes. seems to be I more like that... a cloud radar than an actual weather radar, making it uh, pretty useless for weather av avoidance. Are there any improvements planned for this? So that's true. That's true. It's more. Um... It's more a cloud radar than, than a rain radar. So uh, the reason for, for that is that the, uh, the cloud is, is happening dynamically, uh, depending on the place, the, the, the plane ears. Mm -hmm. So uh, in order to have the, the rain radar, we've got to do a forecast on, on, on the, um, all the air just in, in front of you. And this has not been done yet. And, and yes, we are aware of that and we intend to uh, and it has been put on the roadmap and it will be part of the next improvements. Wonderful. And kind of related, is there any update regarding the Charts Plus integration by NavBlue? Um, Jorg, do you want to answer to that? Um, well, so we had just some very productive meetings with NavBlue, frankly. Mm -hmm. um, we, we are looking into it there's actually the next section is probably going to touch into this just a little bit as well okay. <laughs> so let's postpone it <laughs> we'll answer that question in a second yeah. <laughs> um so when so will... we're working on that working course. on it okay hmm. when will the dv20 fly again oh the dv20 so uh, i know that we brought some stuff and it was a crazy situation because we've got you know, like pilots of uh, diamonds there um, so I've double checked to, with the QA today uh, to make sure that uh, this has been fixed for Simplex Day 3 because uh, I didn't want to, to say something bad here. So it looks like it's fixed, uh, at least. So uh, the, the behavior of the DV20 should be fine again. OK, awesome. And uh, for you, Marcel, I wanted to talk a little bit about the 10 degree bug uh, oh, that will be yeah. fixed for the alpha yoke users. So well, yes, uh, well, I would like to apologize because last time we talked about that, and I, 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 um, I basically give a wrong answer because I was thinking about another bug uh, within ten degrees. We had a bug like the same kind of issue on on a on a knob on the G one thousand, and for some reason I was thinking that we were talking about this very one bug, and it was not. It was about the uh, alpha yoke, mm -hmm. and also on the alpha yoke we still have to to fix that issue. So I'm very sorry for those who. 
I, I mislead. No worries. Thank you. We all make mistakes. Wow. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh, last question, we'll go back to a few videos, but this is for you, Seb. Um, can we expect improvements to right rudder during takeoff to counter combined effects of torque or p-factor, um, spiraling slipstream, stuff like that? Switch over. Okay. So this is the, this is the video of the plane um, stopped on the runway, which is starting right, going left. Yes. I think. Okay. So here, what I'm basically doing. So again, assistance, piloting hard, and the plane was full brakes. I didn't do anything, hands off, all, all controls to neutral. I went full uh, throttle, waited for the engine to be full power. And all I did is um, I released the brakes and the plane goes left. There was no crosswind, by the way, it was set to zero. Um, just to show that um, these are the effects we have. So in the in the file of the plane, and it's been simulated, you have p-factor, you have the torque, you have um, the, the, um, all the all the engine effects. So there's, uh, if you, if you look at the, at the plane here on the video, you can see the right side. Basically, there's a, it's sort of a, a, almost like a tornado. It's whirling around um, the plane and it hits the surfaces at the back. So there's obviously a lot of turbulence, but you can see it's, slot, it's sort of going this way. And so it's, it's pushing on the plane, making it roll. It's also pushing the rudder. So this creates a little bit of yaw. And so this is all simulated. It's in the file. It can be more or less strong. If in the assistances, you're not on hard, it's off. So um, it's like you get the turbulences, but you don't get it pushing or, or any, I would say, yaw or roll effect. effect. And, uh, and so it's simulated. It's been tuned. The problem is there is no data for this. I mean, and so we can send people to actually collect, but the, it's more based on pilot feel. Um, so we are, yeah, one, one of the people on the team is a is instructor who has thousands of hours on the Cessna. It's been real tuned to his feeling. And uh, we are very happy to receive feedback. Should it be stronger? Should it be weaker? Every plane can has, have its own um, um, tunings. We have already had um, people who are specialists on the extra, for example, where it's way too weak and uh, we're trying to push it up. Um, and so uh, this can, it's, it's implemented. It is running. It's sometimes too weak because, well, we, we tend to fly planes like the Cessna or like a, the Robin or the, the Diamonds. And it's not so strong on these planes, right? You have to put a little bit on the foot and you have to counter, but it's not like, like crazy. But for example, on the on the extra, as the, the aerobatics pilot told us, it's very strong. Um, it's even so much that he told you, he told us that um, you wouldn't even sometimes give full power because it would be too strong. You, you wouldn't be able to counter. Uh, for example, I think it's at the start of takeoff or stuff like that. And so yeah, this is it's things which exist. Um, we just have to uh, refine the parameters and 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 iterate over. Over planes and pilot feedback is always welcome there. Okay, thank you so much. All right, I'm. That's the last question. There, we are going to take a two to five minute break now because we have a big surprise and announcement we want to share. But we got to get that set up. So we will be back in a couple minutes. So stick around for that. I'll put it on. I'll be right back. Screen. So see you guys soon. Yep. All right, we are back to this beautiful screen that you've seen before. Um, I'm going to go ahead and kick it over to your to talk a little bit. Yes, hi, everybody. Um, so uh, I hope you enjoyed the format. So first mm -hmm. off, thank you for your time. Uh, it's really appreciated that all of you join and spend time with us. It's, it's, su it's super important. It's, it's humbling that you spend time. Um, it's actually one of the things that is... For me, the, the funnest part of working on the sim is, is you. It's the community, it's the community of creators, and it's also the community of modders. And I'm, um, it's one of those things that makes me super happy. Uh, we've met people that are incredibly smart, incredibly talented, incredibly dedicated. And one of those teams is Working Title. And we are joined today by Matt Nishan, from working title and i'm so very pleased to say that they have decided to join us on our quest to make the most perfect sim and welcome matt why don't you just give us a few words yeah thanks york um yeah super excited happy to be here um could not have imagined this you know when we started uh you know just modding the cj4 and the g1000 um back uh four five months ago 
um, and just uh, just can't say how super excited we are to uh, to to be part of this. So um, just you know want to thank everybody, uh, Nasobo and Microsoft, and and uh, for for having us on. Well, let's speak a little bit about it because we, we there were lots of questions in the chat about the G1000, 3000, and obviously oftentimes when you read the forums like we do, y'all's name comes up all the time. So maybe speak a little bit to it, what what you're planning on doing and how this is all going to work. Yeah, um, well, uh, so we will be working full time on the platform. Um, you know, we want to bring the expertise that we have as pilots, as developers. We want to bring that to the simulator. We want to bring that to the platform. Um, so, you know, we've we've heard um, the the thoughts about the Garmin's. You know, obviously, people are aware of the CJ4, um, and our hope is to really bring a lot of that stuff that we've built on uh, on both of those sets of instruments. Um, to the to the platform and and kind of keep on keep on pushing things and keep on making things better and better for you know IFR flying and VFR flying and all the all the different facets and stuff like that. So um, I think that's you know that's going to be one of our early focuses and uh, there's it's it's early days right there's there's a lot for us to do and and we're just excited to kind of dive in and, and do it full time. Yeah, and I, I don't know if everybody is aware, and I don't know, Matt, we didn't we didn't practice this or anything. <laughs> but, but for someone like me, look, we're working on the platform for you guys, and then working title. I mean, you know, these are super smart, talented programmers, flyers, pilots, and they they left their jobs to join us here. It's a it's incredible if you think about it. I'm super happy. I couldn't be more happy uh, that you guys are doing this, and I think it's going to make the sim so so much better over the years to come. It's going to be great. But I don't want to talk the whole time. So I think we want, I would like some questions directly from you to Matt. So let's let's spend a few minutes. Yes, yeah, feel great. free to ask questions. Chat will we'll answer a few of them. Um, I already have one prepped from the community that basically the big question is, will we, with this partnership, will we get, you know, a complete realistic study level Garmin package from you? So, you know, we are, um, it's, it's our intention to bring our, you know, our Garmin stuff um, that we've built so far to the platform. Um, you know, we, we don't have any particular time frame on that when that's going to happen exactly. But, um, you know, York has spoken before how there's sort of a, a sea change and they realize that they, you know, that we want to make those instruments as good as possible, especially for all the other developers that want to use them. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, our goal is definitely going to be to bring those to a, a high level. Um, how high that's going to go, you know, it's it's an open discussion. Um, but you guys have seen what we've done already on the working title side. The community has, and um, our hope is that we can, you know, we can bring that same kind of energy um, to the to the default instruments for sure. Awesome. Thanks, Matt. A uh, question I'm seeing is, will we get VNAV? <laughs> Will we get VNAV? Well, as you guys know, we, you know, we we have a full working VNAV simulation on the Proline 21. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's something that we would also like to uh, bring to the to the simulator. Um, you know, the, the CJ4 is is something that you know we've talked about uh, bringing in as default. Um, the the plan uh, as of right now is to do that at some point. And so, um, you know, all the things that we've built around VNAV uh, would be things that we, you know, we already had the plans to port those to the Garmin. And so that would be something that, mm -hmm. you know, we'd, we'd love to try and continue to do for sure. Okay. Good question here. Will the working title mods be integrated into the base sim? Yes. Um, and again, you know, we're, this is, this is extremely early days. You know, we don't know exactly when all this is going to occur and over what time frame. Um, but the idea is to, is to bring in, um, you know, all of our work, uh, as to be default in the sim so that everybody can use it, not just the people on, you know, obviously PC is the primary platform right now, but there's going to be other platforms and we just want to make it so that um, everybody who's using the sim is getting as, as good an experience as possible. Awesome. A uh, big question is now that uh, this transition's happening, will, will it still be done in a collaborative fashion on GitHub? Will it still be open sourced at all? You know, I don't think we have the answer to that yet. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, Certainly on the working title side, you know, we feel that open source is great and we've, we've used that, um, uh, that model. Um, you know, it's an open question. I think it's something that we're gonna talk about, um, but we don't, we don't quite know exactly where we're gonna go in that direction. Okay. Um, are there any plans to work on other aircraft the same way you've worked on the CJ4? I think everything is kind of open for discussion. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the, the goal on the working title side, <laughs> 
Jorg. <laughs> Jorg's raising his hand. No, I just want to say, I, I hope you guys know this. We spent so much time listening to your feedback and listening to your feedback snapshot. And, and we like, and we'll get to the feedback snapshot in a minute. You are directly helping steer the ship. I, I hope you know this. So if there's all of a sudden lots of votes for some specific thing, that influences what we do. So for us, we don't have the perfect roadmap for everything. Like then we wouldn't be listening, frankly. So it's, please keep it interactive. Sorry, Matt, just wanted to say that. They're always no, yeah, I think, the perfect I think that's great. No? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I mean, we, uh, our focus also is gonna be working on, um, you know, on the, on the platform side and on the SDK side. Um, you know, rounding that out and, and hopefully being an interface to um, other third parties and other, you know, other mod teams, uh, you know, like like ourselves, um, like we were. So, uh, you know, we we will be focusing a lot on instruments, but we also will be helping to to kind of build the platform up. So um, it'll be split somewhat between those and, and we'll see what the best balance is going forward. That's awesome. You're getting a lot of, you know, congratulations, congratulations, and we're really happy to have you on board. Um, We'll take a couple more questions, I think, two more questions. Um, one here is, will we get charts on G1000 and G3000 because of this? Charts. Um, no. So uh, as Jorg said, you know, there's been some productive conversations about charts. Um, you know, uh, I, I don't have any idea of when, when that's happening, but it's, it's an aim for us all. And we would like to get charts in those instruments. So, um, you know, again, no timing, but 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 they're coming, including Nav Blue. So we had yes. a call just last week with Nav Blue. So was there, Microsoft folks. Matt was there, and other people from Working Title. So yes, it is an it is our goal. Don't know exactly when. That's amazing. Um, thank you, Matt. Is there anything else you want to add um, before we end this segment here? I think uh, I'm personally really excited about this. I think the community is too. So I'm really glad that you're on our team now. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you know, I just, I just want to close out by saying, you know, again, could not have predicted this when we started. Um, for me, you know, I've, I've been a developer for a long time now. Um, and Flight Simulator has been my hobby for almost 30 years. Um, so to wow. have the chance to, you know, kind of move on from what I was doing and be able to work on the platform full time. And also, you know, bring that community spirit that you all have had um, and have really made working title what it is uh, to the platform. I, I just, I could not be more excited and um, I'm, I'm really thrilled and, and hopefully we'll see you guys, uh, some more of you guys. So I'm, I'm stoked. Awesome. Uh, just one more thought. There's yeah. actually a video because some, some of you don't know working title. And there's a fascinating story behind it all. Uh, Matt and team made a video. It's gonna come out in our partnership series. I don't know exactly when. I don't know, Jane, if it's today on Thursday. I don't know, but it's a cool mm -hmm. video. <laughs> Please watch it. You'll learn a lot about <laughs> where they came from, and it's a great story. Awesome. We'll look forward to that then. Uh, Matt, thank you so much for joining us. We'll go ahead and switch it over to a Be Right Back screen to get situated again. Uh, but we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, we are back. Thanks for waiting, chat. We appreciate it. Um, looks like uh, you guys were pretty excited about that announcement, and we are too. So glad to have everyone here live to experience that with us. That was really exciting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, we'll go ahead and jump into World Update Four now, which More is things. also exciting. So I'll, I'll yes. pass it back to you, York. So we are a few, a few weeks away still, so we're working hard. Uh, mm -hmm. But I wanted to give you a quick update. I also made a video. Oh yeah, Modern Media Show today. <laughs> uh, so um, I, as you know, there's um, four countries, France, Belgium, Netherlands, and Luxembourg. We're gonna get new DEM and uh, new aerials for all of them. The DEM, we, we already got the five meter DEM in France integrated and it looks awesome. And uh, we are actually one producer at uh, Sobo Patrice found a source in France for one meter DEM, which is gonna be just shit hot <laughs> so I'm, I'm super looking forward to it great job patrice thank you um, oh yes yep uh then i want to say airports because some of you asked in the chat what are the airports so we're doing the altiport mejev uh lfhm we are bringing nice Côte d'Azur, lfmn and rotterdam the hague uh a uh, ehrd off from gaia 
as you know, I think the quality is super good. So I'm, I'm we're very much looking forward to it, making good progress. And then on top of that, uh, Patrice, the producer I was just mentioning, is working with Orbex on fixing up other airports. And there's over 100 that have been adjusted. So you'll see lots of improvements in the airport side as well. Awesome. Um, I actually wrote it down aircraft is what I wrote down. We might say something. I, mean, I don't know yet, but so I'm teasing. Here's a tease. We <laughs> might say something about a, a about an airplane here when we when we launch. It's not it's not ready, but it's a, sort of an announcement maybe. So look look forward to that. Uh, missions, we have a bush trip, we have a landing challenge uh, for photogrammetry. It's kind of like um, you know, kind of like when we did UK and Ireland. It seemed like kind of impossible to ship this without London. Same here, right? You can't really do France without Paris. And it took a while, but we have found a really good source for, for Paris, and it looks just great. And then awesome. the other city we'll bring is uh, Amsterdam. Uh, POIs, and that is where we're going to run the video. If we have a video, um, but guy <laughs> is busy at work. We collected a bunch of feedback. We are going to have probably over 100 POIs from the looks of it now. And we made there's a quick video. This is super early. Uh, Typically, these turn into trailers like four weeks from now. But given that you all joined us here today, here's, here's a preview. Here we go. back that ended way too soon in my opinion <laughs> <laughs> well i mean it's early actually so you saw that at the end paris didn't have the photogrammetry yet so yeah but yeah. but it's really great you'll see i mean just wait for mont blanc that's all i can say it's, it's gonna be great um nice. that what you also didn't see is black shark is working on new procedural buildings mm -hmm. uh, there will be appropriate um churches and they were, we're doing holland so yeah <laughs> there have to be windmills and there might just be glass houses. So I think all that is coming. And I think it's 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 going to be cool. And 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 there's another thing. One, one of the things I love about the world updates is the, the very first one we did was Japan. And I remember I talked to a reporter and nobody had any idea what world updates are. So he said, oh, really? So you're going to bring, bring the game out in Japanese? Mm -hmm. And I kind of looked down <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no, oh please, we didn't. Um, but we took his input and we mm -hmm. translated the game into Japanese. And that is coming out funny enough with this France and uh, ben uh, Benelux update, we bring in Japanese. And we also decided to translate into Dutch Ooh. because we think, I know lots of people in Holland sp speak English. Yes, you guys know five languages and all that, but there's also your kids. And I see more and more kids playing, which is just the greatest thing really. It's what we hope for. And they, they're maybe not quite as good in English. So doing Dutch for them, I think is the right thing to do. And you'll see us keep doing that for future world updates because it's important. That's amazing. That's so I think that's it for the yeah, world update yeah. part. Cool. Thank you so much, Jorg. That was really exciting. Um, and, and we'll go in now into our feedback snapshot section. Ooh. <laughs> so before we go into some of the details on the feedback snapshot, Jorg, I wanted to chat with you a little bit about some of the feedback that we've been getting Overall, um, uh, the community kind of feels like maybe the feedback snapshot reads a little bit cryptic and they make comments sometimes that it feels stale. Certainly with yesterday's update, there are lots of comments on how we phrased some of the bugs and the releases. So I wanted to get a little bit of your thoughts on that in general. Yeah, my thoughts are we're trying to be super transparent 
and also not write books upon books of stuff. So we, we keep it pretty short. So when we look at something like this and we have the Garmin there at the top and we say status is started, release a sim update three, it probably doesn't mean a whole lot or it means different things to different people, which is like the worst mm -hmm. of it all. And I think a lot of people, I'm assuming a lot of you on the chat, assume that we, we fixed like everything <laughs> or massive amounts on the Garmin. Really what we want to say is, well, we started on the Garmin and it's coming, the, the beginning of the changes are coming in Sim Update 3. But then as you just saw, Working Title is joining the team. They're going to take a lot off that, uh, basically take it on and we'll do this. But I, I, we're thinking about it. Like um, I'd love to get some feedback from y'all because this is for you. These 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 feedback snapshots are a reflection of your input. I think what we're going to end up trying is to give you a sort of a time horizon, because a lot of things are not just a point in time and it's all magically fixed, right? Some of these things take longer, and we have the same thing with weather, right? That came up in the in the sim uh, in the chat quite a bit, and I think Seb and Marcial touched on it a little bit earlier. Whether there are some clear weather shortcomings that we are aware of, right? A lot of people say, hey, the meta is wrong. What, what are you guys doing? Um, we know this. We have a partner. The partner is Media Blue. We had lots of constructive meetings with them about exactly what was going on, because frankly, they're not a simming company. They're a weather company. And we basically merged the feedback from y'all with their knowledge, mm -hmm. and we're coming up with a, with a scheme that will work for simming much better than it is now. How long is that going to take? It's going to take months. It's not going to be tomorrow. It's not going to be next week, but we're working on it. So then you get a, it's ongoing improvements, which is another kind of a vague statement. So we are, we are working on this and we want to make it super clear what we're really doing. Um, I think the format will improve. So don't change with somehow changing stuff. We're trying to improve the format to be more clear. So everybody knows more precisely what it is we're actually trying to do and when. So when you look forward to a sim update or a world update, you know exactly what you're getting or what the plan is at least. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully okay. that helps. Yeah, that doesn't, and you know, chat probably, you know, our next dev update is tomorrow. So probably won't see a, a difference then, but we're gonna be working on some tweaks here and there on this to make it more readable and, and more easily digestible for you guys. Um, but is there anything on this list right now, Jorg, that you wanted to talk to as far as any progress we've made on any of the points? I mean, I would say we talked plenty about the Garmin, mm -hmm. the weather, we, I just said, we don't have a specific announcement, but I can tell you that is a major investment of time and resources to make the, the weather awesome. And we'll, we'll talk about it probably in a few months. It's not quite ready for prime time yet. Okay. Crash to desktop, the reason why it's ongoing, Seb would say, well, because we're fixing crash parts all the time. And that's true. And we are we, we, we see what's going on. And, and the, the crash rate is actually pretty low. But that said, some people have it quite a bit. So we, we get it all via something called Crash Cabin. We see the, the, the numbers that, that people have, like the number of occurrences when a crash happens. Mm -hmm. Asobo's fixing bugs like champions, I can tell you. Like the, <laughs> there's, every time I look at the top 10 crash lists, five of them are fixed. And then there's some new ones. And that's unfortunately the nature of the beast. But overall, when you look at the, the stability, the stability is actually quite high, except some people who are running the specific problem. So we clearly need to look into this more. Uh, and, and honestly, we are, we are on it. It's, it's, a key, it's a key objective of ours. Uh, photogrammetry is one of those things we actually looked. I just wanted to demystify that a little bit. So I was, frankly, on the community side, I said, ah, the, the, it, used, it used to look better. And I was convinced. Right? I talked to Seb and David and Marcial. I said, there's something. And then we made videos, like literally side-by-side -side videos of like, this is what it looked like pre-alpha. This is what it looked like at launch. And this is what it looks like today. <laughs> there isn't any difference. It is just what it is. So it's um, photogrammetry is... You know, it's also not consistent, right? Not every piece of photogrammetry is the same resolution because it's done at different times and different cameras, different lighting conditions. But I can tell you a sort of a hint, we are, the Bing team is actually working on something that I think might have a really big impact. It's later this year. Uh, it's not in our schedule because it's not really not our work, um, but they have a plan to make photogrammetry better of the original 400 people, uh, 400 cities, 400 plus. Cool. Um, I wanted to say a, a, a note on London. So clearly, you know, we struggled to get the UK and Ireland update out on time. Moved it a few times, super uncool, made us all kind of unhappy. And I'm sure you guys weren't pleased either. 
it was because of the photogrammetry more than anything. And then we got it and it looked like somebody was saying it looked like, you know, the end of days kind of thing. It's green. There's a, something is not quite right with a section of London. And um, Blue Sky is actually looking at that. We think that is just a data processing problem. So the plan is that we're going to revisit London at a later date and hopefully have this fixed. There's also another thing that we've encountered, which was the the the, the vertice count <laughs> was a lot lot higher. Uh, so uh, so we now wrote a script uh, like a, a, a spec. Lionel did actually um, about how many vertices there should be. The Bing team now has that, and we're going to reprocess pro process those. So the the frame rate over London is should improve just because of that. Because it's honestly it's not optimized enough, and we should have probably not rushed it out, but. We already felt bad that we we're behind. So that, that is how that goes sometimes. Um, some of these other things, uh, I mean, we can talk about it. Like, I, I, we, we talk about this a lot. Like, we have conversations all the time. And for example, I, I just want to talk to the mirror textures because it's, it's there. It bothers me because it says not planned. And it is because the way liveries are made nowadays has evolved from, from olden days, right? It is no longer based on UVs, uh, actually one of our tech artists explained it to me just the other day because I didn't really know, but it's just a different technique. I, I think the right thing to do is <clears throat> we'll probably make a video of the SDK team or the Asobo art team to explain it because it's better. It's, it's better for memory. It's better all around. It's just not the way it used to be. So we don't, when we say it's not planned, it's not like we don't care. It's just the, the, the system has evolved. It's no longer like it was. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, I, and if you go to the next page, I want to touch just the touch on the top things because can you go? Um, maybe I'm lagging. I wanted to talk about the fly by wire thing. So, I think sure. it came up in this chat. Obviously, when we talk about working title, the very next thing somebody would say, Hey, yeah. what about fly by wire? Um, so, the team at fly by wire has done pretty much exactly what we've asked them to do as far as, you know, there's some legal stuff that needs to be worked through with uh, with open source. Uh, we've made really good progress. We're not 100% done, but I can tell you that there is already a plan for a uh, a community section in our in our marketplace. So we're already planning that it's going to happen. We're crossing the T's and dotting the I's, but I think the it's it's looking really good. And it's probably good that we don't announce anything today <laughs> because there would be too many announcements, but we're making really good progress. Um, but anyways, maybe that's uh, the scenery. I want to I want to plug the scenery gateway system a little bit. So we heard you was number five. Uh, we actually did a prototype, did a bunch of work on the SDK team. There's a, there's a group of people that that actually did a prototype. And then I asked last time, hey, if you have some more feedback and or insight, please ping us. And I would say three of you did, <laughs> which is great. Thank you. And we we looked at your feedback. If other people would like to participate, please write us an email. <laughs> Jane, Jane's going to put the, sure, the, the sure. email address somewhere on the, on the website. Um, but we, we really want to get it right. Like this is part of the hobby. It's what people want to do to help make the world great. So let's make it great and make the, group, the tool great. So we're about to kick this off. <laughs> this would be a good time to get more input. There's the email address. So it's it's a msfsim at microsoft.com. That's the correct address. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. it. I read it every day, by the way. So awesome. Know that that know that we're on it. Yeah, and I mean, I don't I don't think we need to go through excruciating detail on every single thing because we do update it. Just expect. So if somebody has some ideas, Jane and everybody in the community team obviously reads all the forums. Yeah. We read a lot. If you if you have a specific way you think is best, we're open for input. We want to we want to improve this because it's. I think it costs some disappointment which is like the last thing it should do right like we don't want to say hey there's something coming people get all ramped up and then somehow it's not exactly what they expect so we need to just be a little bit more precise sure. in what we're saying we, uh, as you know we're, we're working hard to make the sim great as, as great as we can so it's let's get the feedback right and then on our plan communicate it well yeah. and maybe the last thing is the third page it's the, uh so we have the vr snapshot up now uh there is this there is this thing we want to do, which at Microsoft, we call it G4E, gaming for everyone. Um, for us, it's the no pilot left behind mantra. It is, we want everybody, whatever your needs are or special needs are to have fun simming. And we want your feedback. 
it's the same, send it to the same email address, but because this is kind of the, the outward facing email address. But we want to know, we want to know what things don't work. I mean, we are aware, obviously, of, the, of colorblind or this, that or the other, but there are lots of needs and we want to, we want to, we want to address them as good as we can. So please give feedback so we're aware. And then we, we actually will get into a dialogue with those of you who, who choose to communicate with us about this. Awesome. Yeah, I'm posting the um, email one more time in chat. It's fsfsim at microsoft.com. So if you have any accessibility requests or want to submit feedback on that, be much appreciated. Um, so we have, have one about... More thing. Oh, yeah, go for it. CRJ. CRJ. I think it's signed off. I heard from Aerosoft. I think they've, they, they've done it. I <laughs> yes. want you to know Sepp worked his, worked his booty off to, to get this thing really great. He, awesome. he collaborated with Hans and Alexander a lot and we should celebrate that. It's, it's, a, it's a milestone for the, for the platform. That's and this amazing. is the first truly really complex airliner from, from a third party. Aerosoft has been great. Uh, Hans and Alexander have been great in their team. Um, so looking forward to this next week. Sweet. Yeah, we are too. A lot of fans of the CRJ in chat. So, uh, we have about 15 minutes left, so we're going to go ahead and take live questions. I'm sure it'll go at a very fast rate, so we'll try to answer as many as we can. One of the ones I saw um, already, a lot of people are asking if we could talk a little bit about performance with the latest update, um, and there's been some, some people have noticed some FPS drops. Um, I don't know if anyone can talk about that a little bit. Uh, yes, so, so it's a situation we we, we know already. Uh, we already did some some fixes, um, but uh, on the on the PC side, the, the most complicated uh, thing is that like uh, the, the one we just found uh, like today, uh, nobody in the sub had it because it was uh, on a very specific uh, situation with some kind of hardware. So um, what I can say is that the performances uh, is a, it's a, uh, like one of our um, priority right now uh, for many reasons. So we already did a lot of work for memory and, and, and there's a lot of people at Asobo uh, which are working on the performances like right now. Mm -hmm. So it, it, I, I'm always saying that it's an ongoing situation, but uh, I think it's we more should than, celebrate. I yeah, think it's, we it's should more celebrate. than that. It is shocking how much optimization work has been done, and and so you haven't really, well, we haven't rolled it out yet because it's a different branch. But maybe Seb, but we always talk about like you know, Simos might have some sort of like hmm, a cautious thing that we're that we're bringing the Sim to to Xbox. But there's a there's a benefit, Seb. You want to just we talk about it all the time. Can you just speak to it? uh optimization yeah so it's it's so we're, we're focusing on lossless optimization it's just rewriting systems in a more efficient way um unfortunately it doesn't always i mean many times it's, it's we're trying to do exactly the same so um it doesn't bring new features it doesn't bring improvements it just does the same but using less resources uh, we've done that a lot uh, um, a fairly big part of the team has been has been focused on that for the last months um, the advantage of that is that we have been freeing up a lot of space um, on, on PC. Um, it's, it's really important because what we want in the future is improve the sim a lot, right? We're, we're bringing in new photogrammetry. It's two times bigger. Well, we need, the, we need uh, to be able to run all that. And, uh, and uh, not everybody is going to triple the machine power over the next year or so. So we need to, to free up a lot of power, a lot of memory. Um, the the improvement on memory has been significant, right? The the when when the sim, for example, um, people have thirty two gigs, for example, um, you know that on PC, if you have thirty two gigs, we can use sixty easily, like seventy, eighty. The the Windows is very good at optimizing how much memory is in RAM, and it's all dynamic. And uh, and um, we I think we about tripled the efficiency. So uh, something that was eating thirty gigs is now down to ten. So it frees up a lot of performance and memory. Um, performance because the, the system is less busy at just swapping stuff out and, and it re reduces stutters. It's very long and complicated though, because there's, I mean, flight sim is extremely complex. There's thousands of systems and each one of them was using a little bit of, of space. Um, and uh, and uh, But it's lossless, so there's no degradation. What can happen sometimes is we write something, we test it heavily, it seems to be doing exactly the same. And then somewhere, 
someone, it doesn't work anymore, and it breaks things. And so this is the kind of things which have happened on the performance drops. Like some people have noticed performance drops. It's actually systems which we optimized. And people here confirmed on all sorts of situations, right? We have we will build, I don't know, 50, 100 test cases. People can say, yep, it's better every time. And then we miss a situation and we get immediately the data and, and we it, it's already fixed, like as Marshall said, for some of, I think two or three issues already fixed. And, uh, and uh, yeah, the, even the best testing can catch it all. Um, but yeah, there's gonna be a lot of benefits over the next, um, I would say months when this all, we, we're integrating slowly back into the mm. PC, right? We don't wanna um, rush rush things and break the PC, but it's been, it's, it's we're one branch where there's been a lot of, a lot of, a lot of optimization, yeah. Okay. So just from a technical point of view, we are branching on several branches and wow. and and we've got to make sure that the refactorization we've done is not breaking stuff and it's it's compliant with all the other systems so we've got these these branches to be tested and then integrated to the uh, main uh, branch and then tested and then get published so it's taking time so when i'm saying that uh, uh, we already gain performances that we already gain in memory it's not it's not it doesn't mean that you guys have already the benefit from that uh, it it, it 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 needs time to uh, to be it's published. Probably, yeah. uh, uh, third party planes sometimes they have a stable mm. branch, uh, a dev branch, or something like this. So on the flights um, on flight sim, we have I don't know how many branches for myself, maybe thirty branches or so. And sometimes when you're fixing something very low, it takes it takes steps to get up into the published branch. Mm. I, I just want to say somebody asked, is there going to be a hard fix? We're thinking about it. Mm. So two things were found. We might, but we'll probably talk. We'll, we'll monitor how bad this has gone for for how many people. Um, it's just a it's just a complication. But like there's there's two bugs that are that cropped up. One related to the store. One yeah. Anyways, without going into too much detail, um, we'll, we're, we 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 obviously when you play, we look at your feedback and we will do something about it. So okay. just know that we are. Yeah. And I know somebody was just saying, yeah. could we do a beta for sim updates? The answer is that that's, not, that's a pretty good idea if you should talk about this. Because right now what we're doing is we sent that update out to uh, to some basically third parties, people that yeah. make planes, because it mostly affects plane makers, sim updates. Um, we might we might bring this broader. It's just a conversation. But at least infrastructure-wise, we can do it now. Okay, yeah. And that was kind of one of the first questions asked in relation to that it says uh, respectively respectfully can you speak to what changes are being implemented in regards to quality control on releases well so i can tell you and it's i take some of the responsibility here right I, at some point or another we said we'll, we'll do a monthly update and what that what that causes is a lot, a lot of work and a lot of branches as Marcel just said um and and right now we're also branched off in Xbox land, which is, there's just a lot of branches. And as a consequence of that, we just took a, we just made a decision probably this week, I forget, uh, that sim update, um, sim update four and world update five will be combined. Simply just to reduce okay. the number of bills. We're making so many bills. So we're gonna, we're gonna increase our test team even further. We have started to integrate third party developers into uh, basically preview testing. Mm -hmm. We'll probably go going further with this. We're very actively talking about this, so that's that's what we're going to do. Like we need also expertise, right? Like sometimes a specific thing on a specific plane might be affected, and you know, I mean, you need to really know the plane well to really find that bug. So our <laughs> our testers are also just humans, right? And they don't know every plane exactly the same way. So it gets very specific very quickly. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're putting these. Um, basically flight rings out now where we have more specific testing on specific things okay but yeah that's the idea very cool uh just to interrupt chewy thank you for the raid of party of 196 welcome everyone we are in our live questions portion of the show our last part we have about you know, 10 or so minutes left so welcome um next question i saw was about adis and it says adis is always reporting three incorrect layers of clouds is there any timeline for fixing this uh, it comes with a refactoring of the weather systems. So uh, we're working on that. So I can commit to date. Which leads, I've, yeah, go ahead. Yes. I've, j j I'm, 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 I'm taking a bit of your business, Jen. I've already, already seen a, sure. a question uh, with uh, 
with a shot called Pete. I think it's interesting also because so yeah. um, mm -hmm. we've got a team that's going to work on that. So because shot called Pete means two things. It means that we've got to uh, expose more things on the on the simvars on the network city, on the network layer but it also needs that we've got to rework the network so it's a lot of a uh, lot of time and a lot of work but we want to bring that so we will have soon a, a team dedicated to this so i don't know when it's going to nice. to be good enough to to get published but some some part of the team is dedicated to that okay good to know on shared cockpit um is there any word on stk sdk updates for aircraft names for from partner networks such as VATSIM or uh, IVO to show up in the SIM? I'm not, I'm not oh, aware wow. of this. Like, so I think this has not popped for me. I don't know if you for it. Okay, can you repeat? I'm sorry, I was thinking of something else. I completely missed the question. <laughs> That's fine. Is there any word on an SDK update for aircraft names from partner networks such as VATSIM to show up in the SIM? uh nothing i'm aware of okay it's it's one of the it's actually i would say it's one of the things that so jane actually brought this up on your behalf <laughs> by the way just to just to say that jane was just suggesting hey we should change the feedback uh, snapshot and make it longer which i'm not against but like you know at some point you see a little bit <laughs> you see less movement because but are we going to work on priority 98 eh. oh. um but things like this, I fear, are a little bit lost. So we're we're, we're actually going to go rethink this based on co the community team input. Mm -hmm. Like, can we make certain things like that more visible? Because right now, I can I can tell you, if Marcel never heard about it, I've never heard about it. I don't know if Shep, if you have, but it's it hasn't it hasn't reached that level, which means we're not doing it. Doesn't mean we don't want to. We're just you know, there's lots of stuff to do. So it's um, we'll we'll, we'll pay attention. We'll, we'll figure it out. Sure. Like sure. Jane, I think you're you've been doing a great job voicing what the community really really wants. So sure. And a question I saw asked multiple times is, um, are we working on models or for other people to see models of third party planes or uh, huh. something other than default in multiplayer settings? Yog. Pa. Uh, <laughs> so. Um, hmm. <laughs> it's a memory thing, right? So basically, yeah. right now we we've basically I think I said that last time we made a bunch of we made a bunch of planes. We call them we call them passive planes, yep. which are David, our creative director at the Silvo. Specifically, I asked him like a year ago, what would make you the most happy? What do you think would make the biggest difference? And he said, make the airports more real which means which we translate into well we need to get all the planes right and we need to get all the liveries right and we went on that quest and you know i actually hey i made, i said that last time i made some progress in liveries believe it or not yay and not just the fsx ones there's some new ones coming yay yeah. but uh there's a memory thing uh, that needs careful consideration and and planning right because there's a ton of planes specifically at international airports are all different so do we want to yes but it, it's not, it's one of those, it's not like we just flip a switch and magically it works next month, you know, because then you're going to say, what, what happened to my frame rate, guys? Uh, so we just need to go really think this through and, and have a full on plan. In, that, that includes many other things. Airports are complicated beasts, right? They're like cities. And so, Seb, I don't know if you have a comment. Seems like you might. No? Okay. But anyways, just yeah, know that yeah. we, we want it too. I want it. Everybody wants it. So it's just going to take us some time. Okay. Um, another question being asked a lot is, is there going to be beta testing for Xbox or do we have any information on that? Yeah, we talked about that. There's a, there's a producer here on our team, Lanny, who's has, has done, doing this with our RM team. It's a maybe. It's a little mm -hmm. bit complicated. Um, so let, let's talk about next month. It's not going to happen this month. So okay. maybe, maybe next month. All right. Um, question here: Will thermals be implemented for sailplane soaring uh, in the sim? I guess, yeah. Maybe for Seb. <laughs> so, so um, this is a thing where I think we need a new slider, a realism slider. So mm -hmm. we do have thermals; they are simulated. Uh, we've already shown a few videos and uh, and, uh, and how how the system works. Um, we have currently limited them um, to 
I think about a thousand feet per minute, which is low sure. compared to what we could get. It's already much, but and the other thing is we don't have any visualization. Um, so two things. One thing we we need is a, a slider where you can maybe co give control, right? I mean, what is the maximum I want? What is all that? And visualization so that you can actually um, for the, first of all for us to debug and make sure it really works well. Um, and uh, and for users if they want to, I mean. Normally, you're not supposed to have visualization, and I've seen I've seen feedback like, uh, "Oh, can we have birds?" Like hints, right? Can we have birds? Or sometimes you just look at the clouds, or, or um, normally by looking at the ground, also like, depending on the color of the field, or you sort of know when you when you're supposed to get them. I, I know that at our airport, there's always a thermal on one field, and it's always there. That's where the gliders go. Um, so you sort of learn this. But a visualization tool would help also. So I think these are the two things. It's already there, but we need to make it better. That's that's really the the, the answer here. Um, and I don't have a timeline right now, but um, it's yeah, it's these two things uh, that we need to improve there. Awesome. Um, we have time for maybe one or two more questions. Do we? Can we say anything about the future of ATC updates or anything that you're working on in the next few months? Hmm. Well, so it depends which what you mean. So there's a there was a phraseology point mm -hmm. where basically the old we had some old system from FSX and the the phraseology actually has changed, and that is something that I believe was either fixed or is about to be fixed. It's 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 uh, it's done and it's going to be published on Cine Update Four. Great, and then there's a there's other things that we are investigating, and I, I would like to actually just tease it like it's it. There's a potential that we could do something really great and uh, novel, um, but it's not quite ready for prime time. Okay. There's a whole team working on this. Neither are the Sobo nor, nor, nor it's com completely different, but it's cool. Like if it works out, be awesome. But let's not let's not get ahead of ourselves. Okay. <laughs> ten, ten to stay like, yeah. Understood. So hopefully. Yeah. And uh, can I say something? Because no, yeah, yeah. I saw that I saw that thing like. 14,000 times in the chat. So sure. 787, I just want to explain something because there's something in the feedback snapshot that it always bothers me that, that I'm just saying, so I can all I really type there is not planned. And that seems like a complete blow off to people. The issue with the premium deluxe and the premium packages is that um, we can't really unlock them because of the, because of the owners of the IP. Right. So basically, when you have a plane in the standard SKU, anybody who plays flight sim has the standard SKU. And, and, and we have a calculation that basically gives these companies a certain amount of money, right? Because we're licensing their stuff. On the, if we unlock that on the uh, a premium or premium deluxe side, we don't really have a, the ability to compensate these people appropriately anymore and they will get mad at us and we don't want that because we want the airplanes right so that's actually the tricky part so i i'll give it a think you know maybe there's a so we just can't we can't just throw it out there and say it's open data go for it guys and uh, so unfortunately not but maybe there's a compromise i'll give it a think and talk it over with some legal brains that are better than me um sure I, but I, I mean, look, we all want the plans to be great. It's not like we're sitting here like, oh, no, we want this to be not great. Uh, but we just need to figure it out. OK. Thanks, Jorg. And uh, last question I'll say here is, do you have any updates on VR controllers and our plans for them in the future? Uh, we do. Uh, we have some people working in, on the VR controllers right now. OK. So that's a yes. Well, we don't get a, a time yes. frame chat. Sorry. Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> cool. Sorry. Yeah, you uh, should see. It. It. You, you should actually see it on our feedback update thingy dingy for 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 VR. It should be on there that we started. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have one just for for VR. All right, everyone. It's been a really crazy fun for us. Ninety minutes. Um, I hope you enjoyed the tons of little surprises we had, and we're very excited to be working with Working Title. Um, on our sim in the, in the future. If you missed that announcement, <laughs> we basically hired them to help with our Garmin and other stuff. So we're really excited about that. 
Um, we look forward to seeing the feedback you have on this particular Q&A as we move forward and you know, make, try to make them better and better. So I'll look out in the forums for feedback. Um, is there anything else any of you guys want to say before we sign off? Yeah, thank you for joining us. You're, you are the core of the core. Mm -hmm. You are the people we listen to the most. So please keep talking to us. Trust that we are very well intended, hopefully talented, and we, we want to make the, this the greatest sim ever. So please, please keep engaging. Yes. And, and by the way, if people are grumpy about something, that's okay. Everybody's entitled to their feelings <laughs> yes. and we will approve. We don't take it the wrong way. It's just because you care. So please, please keep it up. Yes. Sure. All right, everyone. I will see you on Friday for a community fly-in. It's going to be a fun one. We're going to have flying Fabio, Teuton Murphy, Forder, and Sudion with us. So I'll see you then. Um, I hope everyone has a great week and weekend. Bye, everyone.